Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this sixth uh, real time pricing engagement session. We'll be hearing from NZX talking about the changes that are coming to WITS and the new WITS API uh, system that will be coming out soon. Those of you who've been to these sessions before will know we do record the sessions and the recording will be available via the Cognize platform uh, within a few days of the session. Uh, given the lag between us presenting and you hearing as part of Teams, if you have questions, please do fire them through on the Q&A chat. Uh, we do have some breakpoints through the presentation to answer those questions. Uh, we'll give a little time when we reach them for you to uh, fire your questions through, but if we don't get to your question, we will pick it up either in the next question session or we'll answer it in the written Q&A that follows. Right, so at this point, I'll hand over to Michelle Balsaras from NZX. Hi everyone, thanks Chris for that introduction and thank you all for joining us today. I'm Michelle Balsaras, Project Manager for the RTP and WITS API projects at NZX. Today we will be taking you through the WITS changes under RTP and give you an introduction to the WITS API developer portal. So I'd like to start off with a brief introduction of what WITS is, in case there are members of the audience that are new to the market and may not be familiar with the platform. WITS stands for the Wholesale Information Trading System. This is the energy trading platform. All bids and offers for energy traded on the electricity market are traded on this platform. WITS is also an information system. So if you're looking for price or outage information, for example, you can find it on WITS. You can access WITS at the URL included in the side pack. Um, there's also a lot of information on WITS that is available without having to log in. However, if you would like more detailed information, you will need to create a user profile. WITS is supported 24 hours and can be accessed on mobile devices. The next couple of slides show some of the data that is displayed on the WITS dashboard. The dashboard is the entry page for WITS. There are two dashboard pages with an autoplay function to automatically toggle between each page. Alternatively, autoplay can be turned off and users can manually switch between dashboards. On this page, in the center of the dashboard, you can find the prices line chart for key reference nodes. This chart shows the latest available look ahead PRS, that's price responsive prices, for the key reference nodes. On the right hand side is the RTP five minute price map. This map shows the latest RTP price for a selection of nodes around New Zealand. On the second page of the dashboard, on the left, you'll see the HVDC chart. This shows the total megawatts for north and south sent over the HVDC line. Underneath is the constraints table, which shows the latest branch group constraints binding above 90% for the next seven trading periods from the NRS schedule. In the center at the bottom of the screen are the outages. This table shows transmission outages that are currently in effect. As part of the RTP project, NZX as a service provider for WITS needs to make changes to enable the successful delivery of the RTP project. However, the majority of these changes are invisible to the market. There are minimal changes to the actual WITS user interface that showcase the RTP changes. It's important to note that these changes are still under development and that users will be given the opportunity to participate in user acceptance testing when the time comes. In addition to the WITS changes, NZX is also making substantial changes to the clearing systems to support the RTP changes. So what, you ask, are the main changes in WITS that are visible to the market? Well, firstly, and probably the biggest notable, noticeable change is that interim prices will be calculated every half hour using a time-weighted average for the trading period that has just finished. 
On the WITS website, users will notice that the RTP and RTP average schedule options will be placed with RTD and RTD average schedule options. The RTD average will be updated as and when WITS receives RTD schedules from the system operator. And as the RTD schedule will contain additional information, and there will be some pages, example, energy quantities and HVDC flows, where there will be an additional selector option for RTD. Provisional pricing will be removed and prices will become final the next day, provided that there is no pricing error claim. The next slide shows very simply a cosmetic change that you can expect on the WITS user interface. As I mentioned before, the WITS changes are still under development, so there's not a lot of visual changes that I can show you at the moment. Just a few important things to note, as I mentioned before. The WITS changes are still under development. There will be an opportunity to participate in user acceptance testing. You can register your interest to participate in the user acceptance testing by contacting the WITS manager at WITS at nzx.com. And we do not expect participant trading processes to, to be impacted by the RTP which changes. Participants will continue to bid and offer in the same way. We're now open for questions on the WITS changes. Okay, we'll just give that a few seconds for you to catch up. Okay, so no questions have come through. We'll move over to WITS API. The WITS API project kicked off in February of this year and is progressing well. The scope of the project is limited to the data that can be found on the following screens. Market prices, energy quantities and energy reserves. The data being made available is public data and contains no confidential participant details. We are currently tracking to timelines and expect the API to be available by the end of 2021. We will provide more information to the market on delivery dates and how to get connected once this information is finalized. Additional public data sets will be added as part of NZX's overall work, overall work program in 2022-2023. NZX is still working through the complexities of making trader data available via API, but the intention is that all data available on WITS will eventually be available via API. We would be interested in your feedback on data sets that would be useful to you. You can send that feedback to wits at nzx.com. I will now hand the presentation over to our partner in this project, Kumar and John Owen Slade from Integration Works are here with us today and will take you through the user experience of the API.
Hi, apologies for that. We appear to be having some sound difficulties with the uh, presentation there. Um, please bear with us while we work through this. previous slide you would have seen a screenshot of the WITS website it had a lot of information including pricing five minute pricing prices at various nodes outages generation and much more it also gives you the ability to download various reports of the WITS API so it contains have a, a lot of why. information however the previous slide even you though the customers can view this information of the WITS website it's not readily accessible or usable by your normal users what some customers have done is use a technique called screen scraping to extract information from the web page and try and make sense out of it. This requires some specialized skills. At this stage, there's also no monitoring or predictive analytics. We don't know which piece of information is being used by who. If we can generate some analytics, then we can build solutions to target certain users or user groups. So the design of the WITS API solution uses an API-driven approach. We've created the APIs and designed the rest of the application around it. We've prioritized the data sets and created APIs for users to access these data sets. This provides access to real-time market data. Third-party users of, or developers can use this data to create intelligent solutions. For example, you can create an app which can turn on the washing machine when the price of electricity is below a certain value or at its cheapest. Real-time monitoring is also possible. You'll be able to see which users are accessing what information, which information has the highest hit rate. Based on this analytical information, the solutions can be enhanced to provide a better user experience. So what is a WITS API developer portal? This is the place where developers can go and access the WIT system APIs. This is similar to an app store where iPhone users can go and look at what apps there are available and down download and use them. Users are free to explore and try the APIs. Documentation is also available to provide more details about the APIs. Before you can use the API, you must register your applications to the developer portal. When you register, you're provided with a set of client credentials, namely the client ID and a client secret. These client credentials need to be provided when you call these APIs. Before we start the demo, here's a brief outline of what the demo will cover. We'll provide a walkthrough of 
the types and list of currently available APIs, provide a step-by-step -step guide of the registration process. We'll also test the APIs and show you how it works. There are two types of APIs, REST APIs and GraphQL APIs. And without further ado, here's a short demo of the WITS developer portal. Here we are on the WITS developer portal. Here a developer or potential API consumer can create a developer account and begin consuming APIs. They can view the APIs that have been made available to them via the API catalog. And they can also view additional information like terms of service and privacy documents. Let's go ahead and have a look in the API catalog. The API catalog houses the APIs available to consumers. It's a public catalog. So as a developer, I can view this without any prior commitments. As you can see here, there are currently two APIs available, market prices and energy and reserve quantities. Say I'm interested in market prices. Let's go ahead and have a look at a spec for this API. The API spec gives a developer or API consumer general documentation of the API. It has an overview with the API's purpose and some hard constraints like minimum required parameters. It goes into detail about filters for range like to and from dates and back and forth trading periods. Node filters for grid injection or extraction points and island filters like the North Island and the South Island. As a developer, I can utilize these filters to get the information I want. If we continue to scroll down, we have a list of available routes and further down, we have the response schemas. Let's say as a developer, I'm interested in retrieving a list of prices for the given schedule. If I click on this route, I get a lot of usable information. Like code snippets in varying languages, I can take this code and paste it straight into my application or service. Furthermore, I get example responses in varying HTTP codes. And another neat feature is I can actually query the API straight from the developer portal. But to do this, we need to authorize. So let's sign up and begin consuming APIs. Registration is simple. It's just a matter of submitting the following fields. Your full name, the email you wish to register the account against, a unique password, and clicking the create account button. This will kick off the registration flow. You will be required to verify your account via email and then await an automated approval process. From there, you're good to go. Here's an account I created earlier. To consume the APIs, I need more than just an account. I need to register an application to get provided API keys and request approval of the application to consume the APIs. Let's go ahead and create a new application. An application requires a name, a redirect URI. This is for OAuth and isn't required for this use case, so we can stub this out. And a description of the application. We now have an application of test app. We get some basic details, credentials which we will use to authenticate against the API services, the services that are available to our application, and our application's status against these services. 
As we can see, our application is currently inactive for both energy and reserve quantities and market prices. The application needs to be active against these services to consume them. By clicking activate, I am sending a request to the API provider to approve my application to authenticate and consume these services. When the API provider, the electricity authority, has approved our application against the requested services, we can take the credentials and consume the services as intended. Let's test this through the API catalog. Now that we're back on the API spec for market prices, let's go ahead and consume the service. First, we need to authorize with our application's client ID and client secret. Great. Let's go ahead and scroll down and query one of the routes. Let's retrieve a list of schedules. Fantastic. Here we have a list of schedules. Let's take one of these schedules and query the prices for it. For now, we will leave all other fields empty. Awesome, here we have the prices for the given schedule of RTP. Now that we have tested the API, let's try using a purpose-built tool to query the API. This is Postman, an API development tool such that we can use it to query the services. Let's use it to run a standard query across the Market Prices API service. This query will get the prices across RTP and final schedules in the South Island for a given from date. This is currently set to the 1st of the 1st, 2021. So we should receive all trading periods after that date. Let's hit the send button. In our response, we can see Before we've received schedules RTP And final, in the South Island, and after the 1st of the 1st, 2021. Let's say I'm a developer leveraging modern technologies like GraphQL. The WITS API supports GraphQL. Let's use it. Running the same query in GraphQL, we're going to get the prices across schedules RTP and final in the South Island for all trading periods after the 1st of the 1st, 2021. Let's hit the send button. In our response, we can see we have schedules final. and RTP for the South Island and after the 1st of the 1st, 2021. With GraphQL, we can specify exactly what we want. To remove the operational overhead of retrieving more data than we need. Great. So let's recap. What have we seen in this demo? As a developer or API consumer interested in consuming WITS API services, I can navigate to the WITS developer portal, create an account and register my applications for API consumption. I can view the available services and how to consume them via the API catalog, here and here.
And most importantly, I can leverage the WITS API to achieve my own application or service endeavors. I hope this video has been educational. Thank you for watching. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, we're moving to questions now. We have a couple from the first part. So, how will high spring washer situations be fixed without provisional prices before interims? So, one of the previous sessions, system operator uh, put forward the changes that are being made to the dispatch schedule that will try and catch more of those um, what, what are currently in feasible situations before the schedule is published. Uh, there still could be high spring washer pricing situations, but they will. The aim is they will be more due to actual uh, grid conditions rather than uh, quirks of SPD solving. The implementation of the scarcity pricing regime in the schedules as well will limit the higher and lower end of those high spring washers. So you won't see the hundred thousand dollar prices. Or certainly less. Than, yeah, won't see the hundred thousand dollar prices at the other end of the high, high end of the spray high spring washer. Uh, I'd suggest having a check through some of the previous presentations where we've discussed this. Uh, I'll send out a, a reminder of which session that was after this one. Uh, we have a question for NZX. Will the memory buffer be increased in widths? Hi, uh, this is Bruce from uh, WIT support at NZX here. Um, I assume the question is relating to the retention of data within WITS um, and we're certainly uh, that that can be extended within reason. So if uh, we're certainly open to any uh, suggestions or if there's specific retention periods that people are very keen for, then please advise us and we can uh, consider any such request. Awesome, thanks. And the next one is also for NZX. Can we access developer now? No, um, the WITS API is still in development, so uh, we're only in a developer state. Um, we're looking to go into UAT in the next month, but that will be for internal UAT, and uh, we will look to uh, deploy the developer portal probably early December. So that's when it will be available to uh, the market users. Awesome. Uh, the next question, does the API support proxies? I guess that's a question for integration works. Um, yeah, it's an interesting question. So we are making available a public API um, accessible on the public internet. So uh, the development of the client applications is at the users um, discretion so we support any sort of um, API client uh, using the OAuth 2 authorization protocol. Cool, thank you. Uh, will it be possible to upload bids and offer files like the existing STP web service using the new API? Not for the foreseeable future. No. Okay, you just got it. Not, it's not in the current uh, development path for the API. OK, we'll give it another couple of minutes to see if there are another minute or so to give it and see if there are any further questions. Um, yep. This is quite a big change for the WITS service being able to pull these prices through automatically in an alive manner using the API. Okay, so that'll be the end of this session on WITS and the API. If any other questions do occur to you, uh, fire them through to the RT. Oh, we do have just been nudged that something has come through. Thank you.
Corporate environment, automated processes, API access, how would multiple, multiple support staff set up accounts? So the API authentication has done just at um, an application level because we're not exposing private data via these APIs. So it's anything that's publicly available at the moment. Um, I understand there are plans for the future, but at, at the moment it's public data through um, that is available through the WITS portal. So we don't need to authenticate the end user, just the, um, the corporate account essentially against the API. Cool. Is uploading files expected at a later development stage? Uh, yes, as I mentioned in the presentation earlier, we are considering um, making the trader processes available, but that's still under consideration and we need to work through a lot of complexities to make that happen. So um, as Bruce said earlier, it's not in the foreseeable future, but it is uh, on the development pathway. It's great. This is probably a record for questions on a session. Great to hear you guys are still there and uh, engaged. Give it a little longer before I go to my slide. Or I'll probably get another nudge as I start speaking that another question has come through. But essentially, barring another question in the next 30 seconds or so, that is the end of this session on WIT. So as uh, Michelle said, if you are interested, in taking part in the UAT for the WITS changes, then please do get in touch with NZX. Uh, this slide pack will be available on Cognize once we've gotten the recording sorted out as well. So you'll be able to pick up the URLs and the email addresses from there. So the next session, sometime in the next four to six weeks, we'll be talking about changes to dispatchable demand with the move to RTP the dispatchable demand regime will move into the RTD schedule, so they'll no longer be dispatched half hour ahead. And we're making some other, taking the opportunity to make some other enhancements around the relationship between dispatchable demand and interoperable load, and some enhancements to the way that demand is dispatched. Uh, keep an eye out for your emails from the RTP project and from Cognize. As usual, when you get the email, register through the Cognize website and feel free to pass around details to any of your colleagues who may be interested. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon and thanks for the uh, questions. Great to hear from you all. Cheers.